For perspective now on the rising tensions between the Biden administration and Prime Minister Netanyahu, we again turn to David Makovsky of the Washington Institute for Near East Policy. He joins us tonight from Tel Aviv. David, always good to see you. You saw Nick's reporting there continues to lay bare just the horrific conditions on the ground for Palestinians in Gaza. That's what people here in the United States are seeing, that suffering, that humanitarian crisis. Tell me a little bit about the perspective in Israel. What's the news coverage there like? I, I usually try, certainly since the start of the war on October 7th, but really even before, um, I try to watch the Israeli network uh, news, which is in prime time in Hebrew every day, try to even watch multiple channels. Sometimes you do feel like, uh, Amna, that you're watching different wars in, in different countries. Uh, it could be uh, for purposes of morale. Uh, that uh, you don't always see uh, the suffering of, of individuals. For the most part, uh, they don't see uh, these reports of people's uh, an imminent uh, sense of starvation in the North, which is about 10 to 15 percent. They see the food distributed in the South, where the 85 to 90 percent are. So they, they don't see the, the, the size of the humanitarian um, crisis in the same way that, that we see it often in the United States. So, David, I want to ask you about these recent headlines about sort of a public now rift between President Biden and Prime Minister Netanyahu, that on top of Senator Chuck Schumer, the highest ranking Jewish official in the states, essentially calling for Netanyahu to step down. How is all that resonating on the ground? Are people concerned? Look, I think there clearly is concern because the president is someone who is venerated here because of his, his trip right after October 7th, a long sense of, of backing for Israel for decades uh, in, in the Congress. And he's someone with ordering the, uh, the aircraft carriers to the eastern Mediterranean, sending weapons and supporting Israel's right to overthrow Hamas. So when the president speaks to the contrary, that's something that, that does concern people. There will be some who want to minimize it, saying it's all a result of American domestic politics, of progressive pressure on the White House. But still, when the president speaks, it's definitely of concern because they, there is a sense of adulation, I would say, here for the president. Schumer is not as known as, as the president is, um, but, uh, you know, newscasters have made the point that he's like the number one supporter in the Senate. But frankly, Netanyahu was not doing well in the polls in Israel. Out of 120 seats in the Knesset, he polls about 18, one eight. And by the way, his numbers have been poor since early January of 2023, before October 7th, due to a very controversial judicial overhaul uh, program that he advanced. So what, what Schumer said, frankly, resonates with a lot of Israelis uh, who are upset with Netanyahu, partly because they think you're, it was your watch. You were, you know, Israel was ill-prepared on October 7th. And something he, he has not handled the war well. He's not been able to articulate a day after strategy. And he has not been as good as the president has been in making the distinction between, you know, driving out uh, Hamas from power and innocent Palestinians. David, support for the war is still very high in Israel. Very in high. a sense right now, is Netanyahu's political survival sort of dependent on the war continuing? Yes, but, you know, Israel has got very strong uh, military and other security institutions. I mean, this is too small of a country where everybody knows someone that he cannot keep a war going if the security establishment does not think it's, it's a very viable objective. The, the country believes in the goal of driving Hamas from power. Uh, if he was seen as somehow artificially extending a war that the security services thought should have been stopped, I think your question uh, would resonate. Uh, but it, it's clear he doesn't want an election because his numbers are low. But I think the war itself is seen by Israelis as just as, as wanting to drive Hamas from power. But you can't beat something with nothing. You have to provide a more compelling vision. What comes after Hamas? And there I feel that the public feels he's not been adequate to the task. David, does a conflict for Netanyahu, does a conflict with Biden in any way benefit him? Does it allow him to say, look, I have stood yes. up to the U.S. calls for a ceasefire, for a two-state solution. I am working to keep you safe. Does that help him? Yes, it does. If the president is seen as pushing kind of two states down Israel's throat in a way that is not what I call performance-based security criteria, clear benchmarks, 
if he is seen as just saying, I'm going to unilaterally somehow impose this, that's, that's Netanyahu's ticket back to power. It's clear. Right now, the president has not gone that far. He's also aware of the backlash that would only help Netanyahu's political fortunes. I don't think the president wants to do that. And he's also, the president is aware that this is, is, is difficult. I think I've said in your show, if, if the Palestinian state looked like Costa Rica, every Israeli would sign up. But their view is if they withdraw, they're more vulnerable, they're not more secure. There has been some analysis in the Israeli press that Netanyahu is hoping that former President Trump and Republicans could step in and offer him a sort of political lifeline. Do you see that happening? Uh, Trump is, is seen as, as totally unpredictable in Israel. Uh, as far as I know, the, Trump has not even spoken a word to Netanyahu since Netanyahu called and congratulated Biden on his electoral victory in 2020, which... Uh, Trump said he won, not, not Biden. And he's blasted him. He's used curse words against uh, Netanyahu. Um, there's a certain image in America somehow that, that Bibi is waiting for Trump. I, I think that's just not, not true. I just think that Netanyahu knows a second-term Trump who's untethered, even in, in, in the best case, and even more untethered in a second term, is a total wild card. And I don't think he feels comfortable but believing that is that's going to be better for him. David Makovsky of the Washington Institute for Near East Policy joining us tonight from Tel Aviv. David, thank you so much for your time and insight. Always delighted to be with you, Amna.